We are back on Inside Politics today. Our guest is former Tennessee Governor Phil Bredesen. We're talking about his new podcast, which is called You Might Be Right. He's doing it with the former governor of Tennessee, uh, Bill Haslam, as well. Uh, governor, I heard your presentation at the Downtown Rotary Club uh, this week. Uh, you said that you and Governor Haslam both came from business backgrounds, and you thought that put both of you well positioned to deal with some of the conversations you're having what did you mean by that? Well, I think I think one of the things um, about the two of us, it, it's not unique, but it's not where everybody in politics comes from, is we were both in the business world, and then we were mayors, and then we were governors. And all three of those are occupations where you actually got to do stuff. I mean, you, on Monday morning, you're supposed to do something. And and uh, I think it, it makes for a kind of a pragmatism and a bias toward action that doesn't always exist in the, uh, in the political world. And, um, you know, the, I think that's one of the things that makes this kind of thing, uh, this, this podcast, a little different than the usual political conversation. I think it's important that you probably should caution some of your people, listeners are going to come in to, to listen to this, that... This show is not set up to say, okay, after you hear this podcast, you're going to know what the solutions are. You're yeah. not you're not going to get solutions on this. What you're doing is trying to start the process to have that discussion. Start the process and have people see, um, um, you know, that there's other ways of looking at things. We started a moment ago to talk about, I mean, for example, on this gun violence, you know, if you just ask a question, Second Amendment, you're going to get people in corners. So what we were saying, what we are saying is, look, you know, here's the number of murders there were in the United States last year using guns. Here's the number of suicides there were. We can all agree that's a problem. Now, let's just talk about what are, you know, so, so okay, what's the underlying problem? What are some of the things we could do that are more constructive than arguing about the Second Amendment? And, um, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do in all of these, um, in all of these areas. Uh in terms of future topics, uh, what about one say on the role of uh, social media? That seems to get down to the core of a lot of these things, at least to amplify or further is, divide things. That is very high on the list. I mean, it's just it's come up time and time again, particularly in, in conversations we've had with people. I mean, the social media is just it's it's uh, without saying whether it's good or bad, it has changed the dynamic, the political dynamic. I mean, it's just uh, the way people get information, the way information is distributed is very different today than even when I. Was governor. And I guess while it may be a single topic, it's also one that I think probably comes up on every one of these it topics does. you're it's, bringing it's, up. It's, it, it underlies an awful lot of these things, yes. How do you deal with some of those issues that are really, really tough, where, where people don't, not just don't agree on what to do, they don't even have the same set of facts to deal with things. How do you deal with people that, that, that yeah. how people have two different sets of facts about something? Well, if it's, if it's different sets of facts, uh, you know, I mean, uh, then I think you can explore that, which is, you know, which is why do you believe that and explain why that's the case. There are some issues, though, that I think are more fundamental or harder. I mean, an obvious one, which is in the news right now after the Supreme Court's action is the subject of, you know, you know, right to life and choice and, and so on. And um, that's one that's a lot harder because, you know, for people for, for a lot of people on, on the right to life side, for example, I mean, it's a fundamental religious belief. You're not going to change it with a podcast or or um, uh, or anything else. And um, so th those are more difficult, but we'd like to try to explore how you might um, at least find, uh, you, you know, find some understanding from each side about where the other the other one is. Not to be over dramatic about all this, but efforts like yours and Governor Haslam to begin to create some kind of civil discourse. These issues are so important that if we don't find a way to solve some of these, or at least start moving in that direction, our very democracy might be at stake. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, I mean, the idea of a, you know, of a democracy is that you know you elect people and they uh, they are your representatives and they try to solve problems. And I really think we've I really think we've lost that in a very fundamental in a very fundamental way. It's always been a messy process, but um, you know, right now things just to be seem to be stagnated. Um, and again, I'm you know, I'm, I mean, I'm a Democrat, but I think both sides are equally culpable in a lot of this a lot of the stuff. I certainly see people. You know, in my party, and particularly on the left, as it's particularly way on the right, and the Republicans, who, yeah, you know, I just think have a distorted view of the world and what's possible in it, and you know, need to, uh, you know, need to get some uh, some some practicality and pragmatism back in their views. As you look across the spectrum of all the issues and all the challenges that face the country, or do you remain an optimist about the future of this country, or maybe not as much as you used to? I do remain an optimist. I think it's a dangerous time. Um, 
and um, this is this would not be a good time for the country to have some really fundamental challenge in the way that you know World War II or the Depression or something came along. But I think we can work our way through it, and you know I've got a basic belief in the you know the underlying intelligence of the American the American people, and. Um, uh, you know, I think often what people lack is is, is just knowledge about the situation. That um, someone someone once told me that uh, you shouldn't ever underestimate the intelligence of the American voter or overestimate the amount of information that they have. And um, so providing some information is kind of what we're trying to do. You mentioned having an issue like war or something else come up. That tends to unite the country much as we did when the right. very early days of what right. happened with COVID-19 but then we got extremely divided they have never really come together about that yeah. are you concerned that for some reason society has changed and we're not going to stay together people are going to find ways to divide us on just about any issue no I think I think it's more true now but I think COVID had that in, had that inherently I think a better example of what happened is you know during the depression um, I mean, we were a very divided country. I remember Father Coughlin was practically a Nazi and was challenging FDR and, and stuff and had a huge following, much larger than any of these personalities today. And World War II fixed it. That's what it took to fix it. So the country coming Very quickly, you, yes. where, where can you find the podcast if you want to find it right now? Um, you might be right, dot org. Governor Bresson, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thanks. Always great to see you. And great. It's good seeing you again, Pat. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you're back here again for a future show. If you can't get into politics in the meantime, you can go to the John Florida site. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. New commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you here next time. Goodbye.